In our episodes relative to the appearance of man in the fossil record, we've crossed out the Tang child, Lucy, Ramapithecus, Homo habilis, the Nebraska man, and we've crossed out the Piltdown man, all as being literally not involved in a descent from lower primates to man. They've all been crossed out. When man appears in the fossil record as Homo erectus, as Aurignacian, as Neanderthal, and as Cro-Magnon, he is fully functional, in fact, parallel, and in many respects, superior to modern man. We found that Homo erectus and Neanderthal man had cranial capacities exceeding ours. We have an average of 1,350 cc's, Neanderthal 1,450 cc's. But now we come to Cro-Magnon man. His cranial capacity averaged 1,650 cc's. A man living contemporary with Job, or a culture living contemporary with Job, contemporary with Homo erectus, Aurignacians, and Neanderthal, but isolated in a valley in Germany, this culture exhibited incredible abilities far beyond modern man to achieve in a short period of time. For instance, their javelins were beautiful. They were adhesed along with Neanderthal man, adhesed with a technique requiring birch bark resin to be heated, heated to 900 degrees Fahrenheit to adhese the shaft to the spear point. And when it's broken, the adhesion does not break. Either the shaft or the spear point breaks. Absolutely superior. How did they develop this technology? They were far superior to us in stature, in longevity. And it's been recognized that along with a robust build, superior cranial capacity, characteristics, this early man, 1600 plus, 1650 versus 1350 for modern man, the Lausanne Caves in France reveal colorful paintings that in many respects rival some of the works of the great masters. Some paintings may relate to phases of the moon, Pleiades, star cluster, and the summer triangle. Various sites feature beautifully made javelins, arrows, and ornate artifacts, even carvings and idols to worship. They were contemporary with Job, Job's companions knew about the God of creation and deviation from that, and this could infer definitely the Cro-Magnon was like that culture, but quite superior. But I want to emphasize this final point. One of the paintings in the cave having to do with Cro-Magnon man is a phase of the moon chart, even showing the time when the moon is darkened. But especially this phase diagram has to do with its effect on the animals. Here we have a young colt who is raising his hind legs to his body and jolting those hind legs. He is behaving differently at different phases of the moon. It was not recognized until modern generations that the phases of the moon actually affect because of the anorthite, which covers the surface of the moon, being radiated and transmitting acoustical energy. Because of this, it has now been recognized that the moon affects the behavior of animals and to some degree, the effect of man. But Cro-Magnon not only recognized that, he illustrated that and diagrammed it in the charts. He was absolutely superior. So when ancient man appears in the fossil record, that record having been laid down during the flood or post-flood, shortly after the days of Peleg, when man appears in the fossil record, he is fully developed, fully modern, superior to our capacities. Therefore, the biblical record is correct. Man was made originally in the image of God and reflected that in his marvelous capacities. The appearance of man in the fossil record has nothing to do with evolutionary development and everything to do with the creative 
hand of God.